¿Y a cuántos años tiene mamá que nos ganas? 20 años, hijo, ya que no vendíamos. A lot of people ain't gonna understand this part, bro. A lot of people, y'all haven't had the opportunity, bro, since y'all was a kid and shit, to have y'all's parents be with y'all in Mexico and stuff, or like, just be with y'all in the United States in general, you know? Y'all have to think about all the people, bro, that they really have came to America for the American dream, bro. And like, <sighs> that shit, like, it does make me want to cry and shit, bro, because, like, honestly, like, we got the green, green Swisher Sweets, the six eggs, blueberry, Swisher Sweets, white grape. You know, we cannot forget white grape. This one right here, purple Swiss. This one, bro, I remember trying this. Don't forget, this one's grape and raspberry. Es tu primera vez que vas para México? Sí. Está bien chula, mami. Hey, ¿qué más quieres, mami? <laughs> What's up, Paul? ¿Qué yeah, mamá? ¿Cómo te sientes? <laughs> She's not a butthead. <laughs> Let's fucking get it. Uh, we got full gas and we're fucking chilling. Let's go to San Carlos, girl. Sometimes there ain't no fucking water at all, bro. Last time we were here, there and was like, no water, and we had to get it from a freaking bucket. In the middle of the Zumpango Lagoon, just outside of Mexico City, it's impossible to escape the scorching heat. Era un lugar turístico. Venían este, muchas personas, muchas familias aquí convivían. Once a tourist destination, for years, Conchita and her family will visit the temple of Mother Guadalupe in the middle of the lagoon. La única manera de accesar era por lancha. Era la única manera de llegar aquí. After two years of severe drought across Mexico, the landscape here has completely changed. Everything is dry, not a trace of water, a desert. It's all that's left. 2023 was the driest year in Mexico since 1941. No vamos a tener buena Currently, about 70% of all of Mexico is in drought. According to Conagua, the entity that regulates water in Mexico, more than 60 million people, half of the entire country's population, without daily access to water. I think we are in a moment in time when it could be really bad if we don't start doing putting up strategies for a better way of managing water. So if, if we continue the way we're until today, it will be very critical and we can arrive to the moment in which we have no more water. Experts now joining a growing call, warning that Mexico City could be just months away from running out of water. So we went directly to the president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, and asked if he had a strategy to combat the ongoing water crisis. No, tenemos problemas de agua. Instead, he insisted that there wasn't a water shortage in Mexico. So we asked him specifically about this region in the south of Mexico, where thousands say they have no access to water. Ayer estuvimos en Chiapas, donde hay una población muy vulnerable y la mayoría de las personas no tienen acceso a agua. 
Chiapas es de los estados con más agua. Con más agua, pero no significa que les llegue a las viviendas de las personas. Les, donde, es donde más llega agua. This is San Cristóbal de las Casas, located in the state of Chiapas, where you can find about 30% of the country's water supply. Yet, according to the water plant, 700,000 residents have no direct access to water. Los garrafones están vacíos porque pues no hay de dónde llenar. Some point into factories like this one, a Coca-Cola plant that has been given permission to extract water for almost three decades where over one million liters of water are collected on a daily basis. Many families drink Coca-Cola several times, not during the week, but during the day. Dr. Arana has been studying the effects of diabetes in Chiapas. He says the water scarcity has led families in the community to resort to sugary drinks. In fact, the state of Chiapas has been considered the place that consumes the most Coca-Cola in the world. We found that many babies that are less than six months, younger than six months of age, are given Coca-Cola in bottles. So this is a very bad start of life. In 2020, the town's city councils approached the National Water Commission to revoke all concessions that were given to Coca-Cola, but their petitions were denied. After we reached out to Coca-Cola for an interview, they sent us this statement saying, we recognize the water access challenges in San Cristobal. And for nearly a decade, we have been working with local communities to help improve water access. We always abide by local laws and regulations. We also agree that too much sugar isn't good for anyone. In Mexico, over 45% of our broad portfolio of products are low or no sugar. Meanwhile, in Zumpango, the community gets together praying for rain. Vanessa Oak joins us tonight from Miami at our Telemundo Center. Vanessa, we've been covering the upcoming presidential election in Mexico in just over a month. How big of an issue will the water shortage be for the presidential hopefuls who are campaigning now? It will be very important. In the middle of the worst drought in recent decades, the lack of water will definitely be a central issue for the candidates competing to succeed Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. For the first time in history, it will be a women president. The first contender is Claudia Chenbaum, who leads the polls. She proposes a 30-year plan to achieve sustainable water use in Mexico. She is an environmental scientist and a co-author of the 2007 Nobel Prize-winning IPCC report. Report. Her primary contender is Sochil Galvez, who proposes to expand the water distribution infrastructure, to build secondary networks and to repair water leaks. Water will be key in the next elections. Many citizens are really angry. Hundreds of people have taken to the streets of Mexico to protest the water crisis. And just for you to understand how important this is for them, according to the Mexican Constitution, access to water is a human right in Mexico. As it, as it should be, and those candidates are going to have to have some answers and or some plans. Oh my gosh, look at my daughter. <laughs> Buggy's giving out hugs too. Vente, mami, te quiero conocer tu tío Renato. It, was, it used to be a door, but they cut this shit down. Uh, I don't know. Good question to ask my dad. How you like the house, Yari? Huh? <laughs> he just took my little girl. <laughs> What did you say when you entered? That it's beautiful in my house. Nothing to do with those things. It's so beautiful. 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 It's so beautiful
¿Cómo se siente mantener todos los nietos aquí? A ver, todo para allá. Pastero. Hola, baby. Sí, mamá, está en oscuro. ¿Y a cuántos años tiene mamá que nos ganas? 20 años, hijo, ya que no vendíamos. Mira. ¿Está ese mismo cuarto, güey? Sí, todavía. <risa> La misma recámara todavía. ¿Qué era el pensamiento más antes de que se fueran de aquí? <coughs> ¿No te acuerdas? Mm. So look, bro, I just want y'all to like understand this shit, bro. A lot of people ain't gonna understand this part, bro. A lot of people, y'all haven't had the opportunity, bro, since y'all was a kid and shit, to have y'all's parents be with y'all in Mexico and stuff, or like, just be with y'all in the United States in general, you know? But y'all have to think about all the people, bro, that, that they really have came to America for the American dream, bro. And like, <sighs> that shit, like, it does make me want to cry and shit, bro, because like, honestly, like, the whole time since a little kid, I remember that, Since being a little kid, my mom has always told me, oh, I have a house in Mexico. It's, it's a really pretty house. It's big, like it's a big house. She, she has always just like expressed to me what they did to come over here. Like for me to be born here and be a US citizen, have opportunities as a US citizen. Like the whole plan, when before I was even born fam, the plan was for us to relocate to the United States. As soon as I turn 18, get them papers, bro. Today we are, I am 22 years old. As soon as I turn 18, we started doing his papers. Bro, finally we are able to go. It just blows my mind, bro, that like, a lot of people are not gonna understand this shit, but this is like the American dream, bro. And a lot of people actually do sacrifice themselves from their country to come to the United States so they can actually grow and have something in life, bro, not just be stuck in Mexico. I gonna see that throughout this video, bro. Like, there's no water in Mexico still to this day. All from the 1980s when my dad was over there, bro, there used to not be any water. We're in July 2024. Still, bro, there's no water. It's just like, they're still living in the old times over there. So imagine, <clears throat> whoa. Just imagine in my head as, but I like grew up over there, <clears throat> if I would even be doing this. Like, that's just fucking crazy. So it's just like, be open-minded about this shit and like, Bro, I'm so grateful to being able to get my parents the papers that they have always dreamed of. Their dream has become to reality, and now they're American citizens. If you yourself, fam, you're under the... <laughs> If you're yourself, you're the under the age of 18 and shit, bro, and you're here because of your parents, bro, like your parents, they brought you here, so, like, you could, you could give them papers, nigga. Don't give up, bro. Really soon, you're gonna get that shit accomplished. When you do, nigga, that's gonna be the best feeling in the fucking world. And, bro, that just blows my mind. And that shit, like, I remember as a little kid, we would always talk about that shit, bro. Or, like, I would be doing bad in school or something, and my sisters would be like, dude, you're here because we're trying to get my parents' papers. Like, don't fuck up. Keep going. Keep going. And, nigga, we have finally accomplished this shit. Gracias a Dios. Salve, man. ¿Y la misma cama todo? Sí. ¿Y la verca? 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 Oh, look at that one. She makes your cry face. Mira, aquí se parece. Ahí igualita, mira, juntas. Sí. A ver, aquí acá. No, that one. Mira. He's so cute. Look at my teeth. I know. Oh, my goodness. That pinche chamaco, baby. Aquí sí tienes mucho donde brincar, papá. Mucho. Oh, yeah, you are. You are. 
Y luego ahorita está liqueando eso también. Y mira mi manito, que está, la manita mía que estaba. No, la quitó esta güey. Mira. Y tanto que les dije que no la quitar. My little handprint was right here. But then they already took it off. This would be really small right there in red. Y lo estaba en rojo, ma, y luego lo pintaba en rojo. Y ahí está, ¿qué pasó, amigo? ¿Cómo está, amigo? Mi mamá, que no puedo bajar. Mi mamá. Le ganamos, Yane. Ya no sé qué Llegando tarde, como siempre, cabrón. Felicidades. Oh, felicidades a las madres, mana. Tú también, felicidades a las madres. Happy Mother's Day, mamá. Yo nomás la saludé. ¿Y qué, mijo? ¿Está caliente? No, no, no. Porque el día más feliz. Ah, pues bien. No, nomás la saludé. Mira lo que tengo acá yo, mira. Dale un beso a tu tía Susi. Corre. And guess what I just did? I just ran out of fat ass fucking joint. What? Cut. Look at this Mexican cat. That one looks like a different cat. That one looks like. An American cat. Don't have stripes. I didn't know this show was still recording. Damn, how the fuck do I get on with those scraping? No, I heard that shit scraping. Let go ahead and like this. Come over here real quick, please, so I can shower. At the other house, brother, shit. I don't have no fucking water. One of the largest cities in the world, and it is running out of water. Tonight, there is serious concern in Mexico City about the taps running dry. It's a slow motion disaster decades in the making that scientists say has been made worse by human caused climate change. What can be done other than just hope for rain? In tonight's Prime Focus, our Matt Rivers files this in depth report from Mexico City. There is something jarring about a reservoir not full. It's like a morbid glimpse into the past before the water came. Ground once saturated just a few years ago, now cracked, dusty, desolate. This lake bed is crying out for more water much like one of the biggest cities in the world, just two hours away, that it is supposed to nourish. In the hills that surround Mexico City, Bernardo Nonato Corona and his wife, Manuela, treat every drop of water with the utmost care. Vamos a reciclar el agua para este, por decir que para otras cosas, por ejemplo, para el baño, Toda el agua que sacamos de la de la ropa con que jugamos la la ocupamos la reciclamos. Sí. This is what you do in a place where the water has never been more scarce. Son más más fuertes, sí. Sí por las calores, sí no. Si tenemos una poca de que nos dejan, no nos alcanza. Es más fuerte por la calores, sí estamos sufriendo, sí. Algo muy fuerte, que es el agua. There is no running water here. Le damos varios usos al agua, miren. And in the midst of drought, the rain hasn't come either. This water is purchased at great cost for a low-income family. ¿Cuál porcentaje de tus ingresos estás gastando en, en, en agua? Pues sí, será que un 25% de... 25%. Sí. 
que el agua es muy necesaria, se ocupa para todo, para beberla, para el mantenimiento de la casa, para el uso personal, hasta para las propias plantas, que no llueve hay que tenerles que regar algo, entonces sí se gasta bastante. Nonato Corona's story is repeated millions of times over here in El Valle de México, home to Mexico City's sprawling metropolis of some 22 million people, which right now is at a crossroads. For months, if not years, Mexico City's watershed has been receiving significantly less rainfall than average, and the results are apparent. The water crisis in Mexico City is a long brewing crisis in a place that, like you say, has a huge abundance of water naturally. It comes down to management. And for the first time, many are openly questioning if the city will literally run out of water in the near future. 60 to 70 percent of Mexico City's water comes from aquifers. A recent study finding as much as 5 million Olympic-sized pools of groundwater have been pumped out each year for the past decade. We've drawn down on the reserves of water that we had. You know, an aquifer in Mexico City that took tens of thousands of years to fill up with water. In the course of three or four generations, we've dropped down to the bottom. It's depleting the city's water supply and causing it to sink some places as much as 20 inches per year. And with groundwater dwindling, the city relies on rain to fill a reservoir system responsible for the rest. And with that historic drought fueled by human-caused climate change, a long rainy season is no longer a guarantee. The water levels in the Valle de Bravo reservoir have never been lower. It's only 20% full and dropping people are cutting grass where 30 feet of water used to sit. The cows graze on what's left. So we're walking down to our boat right now, but the crazy part about this is that up until a few years ago, all of this would have been completely covered by water. We would have been submerged by about three, four meters worth of water, and now it's dried out. Esto es lo peor. Esto es lo peor ahorita. ¿Qué has visto? Ajá, digamos todas las, digamos todas las, las embarcaciones, todas las marinas, todos los clubs tienen problemas como por decir las rampas sí. para poder desembarcar. Si no alcanzan al, Ajá, al agua, ¿no? No alcanzan al agua. Y... That dam right there is a part of this water system, and it's designed to capture all this rainfall in this lake so it can be pumped to Mexico City. But right now, the water level here is so low, it doesn't even reach the base of that wall. In this moment, that dam is hardly necessary. So the reservoirs are basically empty. That's 30, 40 percent of the city's water that we're no longer getting or we're getting like a like a trickle where we used to have a stream. So we're not recharging our aquifers. We're pumping an enormous, a crazy amount of water out of the out of the ground because there's 22 million people up here. And that is the, the basis of the problem. Decades of underinvestment in Mexico City's water grid means that some 40 percent of all water pumped through its pipes is lost through leaks. The water just seeps into the ground. And when it does rain, the city pumps out billions of gallons of water to avoid flooding, water that could, in theory, be recycled. Representatives for Mexico City's water system did not reply to ABC News' request for comment. Fixing these issues would take political buy-in and acknowledging past mistakes. Something Mexico's president-elect and former mayor of Mexico City, Claudia Sheinbaum, is apparently reluctant to do. Ningún científico, porque en eso no hay ciencia todavía que alcance, pudo pronosticar esta circunstancia. To be clear, that's not true. Scientists say droughts are inevitable and should be planned for. Ya sabemos de dónde va a venir el agua, cómo invertir, y esa va a ser la gran inversión que vamos a hacer en la zona metropolitana del Valle de México. What she doesn't do is lay out exactly what that looks like. Officials from Shane Baum's campaign did not reply to our request for comment. For people like Bernardo Nonato Corona, 
and his family. An historic drought made worse by climate change, plus record heat and faulty infrastructure means no water. Bernardo's daughter goes to a school nearby that is one of the few buildings here that has running water. Thanks to a water catchment and filtration system installed by Enrique Lomnitz's nonprofit Isla Urbana. It's an innovative solution. When it rains, capture it and store it and filter it. <laughs> it's a model for what Mexico City has to do overall use the water it has much more efficiently and sustainably. So when drought comes, the city is better prepared. I think it's an existential crisis for the city. But I think that people are incredibly adaptive. I think people are very resilient. I think Mexico City is resilient. Mexico City has been through a whole lot of things. And as climate change continues to make heat waves more extreme and droughts longer, for people like Bernardo and Manuela and millions more in Mexico City, everything is on the line. No piensan en en nuestros hijos. No pensamos que el día de mañana, así como vamos, va a ser más cara el agua y va a haber más escasez de agua. Entonces, si no le damos una solución a esto del agua, este, no sé qué va a pasar el día de mañana con nuestros hijos, nuestros nietos. Don't be scared, nigga. We in Mexico, cuz. Hold on, hold on. Grab that and go to the. Can you see over there? Oh my goodness. Go ahead. Okay, don't go ahead. Hold on. Oh, yeah, don't go ahead. Yet. That little good. girl right there, fool, her people are running shit right now. Well, okay, yeah. Nah, don't floor it, just drive. <laughs> that was like a little, like, six year old kid driving. But these people are running shit. This is the meat market I was talking about. Look at the little ass kid. Daddy, you're doing good. <laughs> this shit, you really are doing really good. I feel safe. Yeah. Do you actually? I feel safe and secure. No más que si está un bordo o algo, we que like, we'll see, like, que se pare todo. Okay, that's right. No. Why? You're you drive NASCAR? You drive okay, NASCAR? Okay, learning, dude. Learn to learn. Comment down below if you're 14 right now, fam. <laughs> hey, if you're riding with me right now, I would definitely let your ass drive. Oh, yeah, look. Haha, <laughs> it's Mother's Day, Kev. <laughs> that shit is amazing. We have never driven, like, we have never been in the back. We have never been in the back. What the fuck? Alright, we're leaving down. She almost hit the thing. Press brake. Oh my god. Oh. It was great. They can wait. The bitch had niggas best way. God damn. 
You better wait, Yadi. Oh my gosh, take your time. Good. Damn, Yadi. Leave her alone. She's doing good. <laughs> Why are the windshield wipers on? <laughs> Ayúdale con los, con los wipers, please. Con los de estos, please. No, 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 más le para arriba. Sí, ma. Manuel Benavides. We're going in there right quick. That's a store, family. Hell yeah. That nigga's looking at the window. Ah. How you feeling, Kat? <laughs> you like it or what? Yeah. I panicked. Last time that I came and shit for him, I came like riding around, though. I could not find no seats, man. That shit was fucked. This time, can't prepare, bro. We got the green, green Swisher Sweets, the six eggs, blueberry, Swisher Sweets, white grape. You know we cannot forget white grape. This one right here, purple Swiss. This one, bro, I remember trying this. Don't forget, this one's grape and raspberry. And then this one's mango passion fruit. It's called passion fruit. Or white grape, blueberry. Let's go ahead and try these ones real quick. I already smoked on the other one, fruit, but then my freaking child, like, he slipped into the water in my head. I was like, drop the drop the blunt. Let's go ahead and throw these. Look right there, bro. That's where Paula Costa's brother landed. Juana Costa. Over there, that's where like they were standing. The dude that shot him, he shot him dead right there in this building. Right. <laughs> we literally just chill up. There's even a little area so you can chill. This is where you, your body gets your lemonade. Yeah. It's some random ass spot. Mm -hmm. It looks good. I don't know if y'all understand this shit, bro, but like, the house is right there, bro, and then y'all put shit right in the front of their house, bro. Like, this shit is just at the entrance type shit. And that shit is like smart as fuck, bro. Like, every little business around here is like a, like a home that they're just doing like business out of type shit. How the that hell taste? That should taste right here. Mm -hmm. What? That's as good as hell. I just took a sip of that, bro. That should taste fucking great. It was 45 pesos. I gave it 50 pesos. That's probably like. It's good as fuck. Two dollars, fifty cents, three dollars. Lemonade? You want one? Hey, I said I bought them. I drink this whole early morning. And that's some of the way some tortillas. What else? Like some tortillas and some other shit. Let's go get this. What? Hey, we can middle of the city. Hold on. Right now, I just got some bacon. That's some below that. Up here, and plastic cat around. It's a plastic. Oh my goodness. Está bien chula, mami. Sí, esa es la mera camotita. We just gotta replace that real quick. Ahí están preguntando para qué era un chivo o una chivita. No, no sé. Pero el caso es que son chivos. Tú, madre, ¿qué es lo que da? That's my grandpa. That's my grandma. Anda. Conta la foto esa, man. La de. El cómo se llamaba para. David. David. El el apellido. Soto. I haven't met that sort of family. Yet. Maybe our Sotos may be my family. Por qué no te lo quieres llevar? Ya tengo mi papá. Ya tengo mi papá. Ya mi papá ahí. 
I can smell the water, bro. That shit is coming. It's about to rain. It's like a big cloudy and shit. We're about to go to OJ food. We're about to go get like some candy. Nigga, we driving all the way over there just so we could go get some candies. And then we're about to get like <coughs> some money and shit so we could do a barbecue later on. Right now, food, it's like over here is like real nature food. That shit is fire. <laughs> Which one? I never tried the that one. Oh, you're trying. My little baby, she's sitting on top of a unicorn. What the hell is this doing? I'm going to get a quinceañera. Just woke up right now. He's like, dude, I'm inside of a candy store. Look at that shit, man. They don't make that in the United States. Trucks are cool. Mid-size trucks are awesome, especially right now. But there's a pickup segment below the mid-size that is proving quite popular at the moment. The compact pickup is making a comeback thanks to the likes of the Ford Maverick. Hyundai has one too with the Santa Cruz, but now it seems that Ram is ready to dive into the game. In Brazil, Ram has just introduced a new truck. It's called the Rampage, and it certainly seems like it would be a good fit for the US market as well. And the styling will certainly appeal to fans of the Ram brand. This is the first Ram branded truck for Brazil, but there are touches that show it's North American minded as well. In fact, it was designed in a collaborative effort with the Stellantis Design Center in South America and a team of North American designers. Everything I'm gonna talk about related to engine and specs is for the Brazilian market truck, but it's worth paying attention to since some version of this could be heading our way. Ram is serving up the Rampage in three flavors. You have a Laramie, a Rebel, and an RT version. Laramie is the fancy one, the RT is the sporty one, and the Rebel is geared towards getting dirty. Nah, I'm gonna just, just go back, cuz. Brake check there. <laughs> They just put up on my dad right there. But now look. God damn. That was all the people running for the first time. 